Welcome to Sword of House Stories. I hope you enjoy the story I have for you tonight. Dear Mrs. Chalmers. Dear Mrs. Chalmers. I realize that this letter is reaching you at a very difficult time. I'm not going to claim to know how you feel, not being a parent myself. The worry and constant anxiety you're experiencing must be unbearable. You're probably not sleeping. Every time you close your eyes, I'll bet the worst possible scenarios play themselves out in your mind. Well, allow me to put you at ease once and for all. Your precious little Timothy is completely safe and in my care. I must say, he's a remarkable boy. Having seen you in the news, though, I am reasonably certain that it was nothing you did that made him the way he is. You don't seem to have it in you to raise and inspire a child like Timothy. He is truly gifted. And perhaps it was for the best that he wandered away and into my sights. Now I'm certain I'll have a chance to reach his fullest potential. Allow me to explain how Timothy and I met. As you know, it was Halloween night. Ah, yes, my favorite night of the year. The night when everyone goes around masquerading as something other than themselves. So many people roam the streets covered in blood. I don't stand out on Halloween. I don't have to hide. It's the freest I get to be all year. I just killed some filthy whore by a dumpster in an alleyway. Hookers get murdered all the time. Often by me. And no one seems to care. Even when the news feels like reporting on it. That's what makes it so easy. If there's no one to miss them, there's no one to demand justice. This one, though, she was special. She had such a pretty mouth, with big, sweet lips, eyes like a damn beanie baby, and the softest, smoothest pair of tits you could ever want. I could tell she was new, young, not yet ruined by the street. Those are my favorite ones. I fucked her in the alleyway. Something I don't always do. And then I muffled her screams with one hand while slicing through her flesh with the knife I held in the other. It's my favorite feeling in the world when they stop fighting. And ever so gradually wind down from the high anxiety to a complete stop. Sometimes I swear I can feel their heartbeats weaken and fade and peter out completely. God damn, do I love it so. Once I'd finished her off, I picked her up. Remember, I didn't need to worry about the blood on this particular evening and chucked her head first into the dumpster. She landed on the inside with a louder thud than I expected. But what I expected even less was the gasp I heard in response. Someone was hiding behind the dumpster. I'm not too proud to admit that I was scared. I mean, who wants to get caught? I sure as hell don't. You understand, don't you? I had my knife ready, just in case I needed to use it again and slowly crept around to see who this witness was. And there he was, this little boy in a clown costume. He's told me since then that he's 10, but damn if I didn't think he was a toddler or something. A bit short for his age, isn't he? That's okay though. Special comes in all shapes and sizes. Well, I regret it now, but of course I barked at him. I demanded to know what he was doing hiding behind the dumpster. What he said damn near floored me. Do you know what he said? He said he'd been out specifically looking for me. How about that? Naturally, I asked him what the hell he was talking about. And he explained that you and his daddy make him watch the news every night because, in his words, you want him to be smart. Well, let me tell you, you sure did get your wish on that one. He said he'd seen a couple of news stories about the guy who keeps killing people. And so he wanted to come and find me. He picked Halloween to do it, because it was the first time you were letting him go out alone. He knew I mostly went for horrors. He even picked up on the kinds of settings where I like to do the deed, which is how he knew to wait for me behind a dumpster in the shitty part of town. See? Smart kid. Of course, I asked him what he wanted to find me for. Now this, what you're about to read, is extraordinary. Honestly, it chokes me up. I thought I was beyond these kinds of feelings, but your boy, your remarkable little boy, do you know what he said? He said I inspired him. 
He said my work excited him. He told me his dream was to be just like me. How could I say no to that? Sure, I'll admit that I was totally prepared to kill him. But I knew when I heard those words and saw the sincerity in those little eyes of his that this was something I couldn't just throw away. And so I'd taken little Timmy under my bloody wing. Although, of course, he hated that I just called him that. You know how he is. He's exceeded every one of my expectations and passed every test I've thrown at him with flying colors. It's amazing how quickly he earned his first kill. I'll never forget the look on his face as he sliced into that woman's chest. It was the face of pure, unadulterated joy. I've never been so proud. And that's not all. He's getting better by the day. In fact, he started going out by himself now. That's where he is tonight. I decided to take the night off to write you this letter. I can hardly wait for him to get back and tell you all about who he managed to find and what he decided to do with them. He's astoundingly creative. So, Mrs. Chalmers, please don't fret. Timothy, as you can see, is completely safe from anyone or anything that might try to harm him. But whether or not they are safe from Timothy, that's the question now, isn't it? Sincerely, the guy who keeps killing people. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed tonight's story, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, stay spooky.